It was evening when Edward stopped by the vicar's orchard. He brought no passengers, nor was he there to pick any up. Instead, he stood and watched happily as the traction engine paced through the trees. The engine was Trevor, whom Edward had saved from scrapped weeks prior. He was overjoyed about his new home, and he told Edward just that. The vicar has me scheduled for rides all week. I'm feeling worn out in all the right ways again. Oh, there'll be more to come, don't you worry. Trevor's face grew somber as he reflected. As every day passed in the yard, I felt my parts grow weaker, and my chance of being bought seemed to become smaller. But I don't fear that anymore, he said smiling once again. Now, growing weak means repairs, not scrap. I understand, agreed Edward. I owe everything to the fat director for giving me another chance to work hard again, but his voice trailed off. But what? The fat director doesn't own the railway. It's the fat controller now. I only hope he sees the railway as the director did. I'm sure he will, ensured Trevor. You and your friends are the most useful engines I've ever known. Any controller will see that. Edward thanked Trevor for his kind words and headed back home. stopped at Wellsworth, where the new controller stood on the platform. Edward, he began softly, there is a train bound for the smelter's yard, and I need you to take it. Of course, sir, Edward replied, but Sir Topham Hatt wasn't finished. He started, angrily. There was a delay further down the line. I tried to have this train in before nightfall, and I made sure it was nothing more than decommissioned lorries and scrap metal. Edward squinted and thought, It's no problem, sir. I've taken this train for a while now. And I am sorry for that. From now on, I will arrange for an engine on the other railway to take this goods, giving you a much-needed rest. Edward was now lost. Despite this, he thanked the fat controller, and after one last apology, he climbed in his car and left. Edward gathered the train in the yard. And as he waited for the signal, he thought, To be apologetic over a train I've taken for years is strange. It's not like I haven't been to the smelters before. Of course, this train used to be hard when steam engines were still being cut up, but they haven't been for years. The fat director used to scrap steam engines, but of course he did. Engines get old. Not like Trevor. He still has many years of hard work left in him. But the fat controller is new. If he were to scrap one of his engines... It would be me. had just begun its ascent when Edward arrived at the smelters. He plowed into the heat, lying in the valley of scrap around him. The thoughts in his smoke box mirrored the foreboding atmosphere of the shed. Being here always reminded him of Trevor, and how ambiguous his fate must have felt. But tonight he didn't fear for Trevor, he feared for himself. Edward stopped just before the smelter's entrance. Ahead of him stood an engine, its shape just visible through the smelter's red glow. Have you come to take me away? The engine was silent. Edward remembered the buffers, the tracks ahead all ending with them. It was then he understood. So you have come for me. Were you one of the fat director's engines? The engine hissed. 
an engine from the other railway. The engine hissed again, but this time it started moving. Edward watched as the figure crept from the smelter's glow and groaned to a halt in front of him, as if to disagree with Edward. So you haven't come for me. You've come for me. The engine stayed silent. On a director's engine or from the mainland? Then where? And as if to answer his own question, Charles, you were a fat controller's engine. Edward felt his boiler run cold as the engine stood silently gazing at him. He knew he was right. So he does scrap engines. The engine hissed at Edward, more indignant than before. Edward understood. Only one, he said, and he thought he heard the engine sigh as he agreed. He only scrapped one engine. He scrapped you. He didn't want to, but he wouldn't make anyone else do it. He wouldn't put that on anyone else, so he cut you up himself. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. There was silence and Edward thought for a long while. The engine's presence no longer startled him. He finally said, So the Fat Controller, he will keep my friends and I safe? But the engine didn't respond. Edward already knew the answer. The engine retired once more into the smelter's glow, returning back into a figure and then to nothing at all. Edward stayed silent. He had a lot to think about. He still thinks about that night, about the engine and what he was told. Although he doesn't fear the smelters, he understands the controller's decision to withdraw him from the smelter's train. But above all, Edward is happy, now knowing that he and all of his friends are safe, being the Fat Controller's Engines.